So I would like to welcome all of you into this webinar. My name is Miss Nyawira. Some of you know me as Miss Nyawira. Some of you know me as Tatanya. So welcome to our webinar. And at this point, I would like to just ask our panelists to please show their faces. Yeah. So we've got our very own George Ambe. George Ambe, please show your face. Wherever you are, we'd like to see you. George Ambe. All right, great. And then we would like to see Mr. John. Mr. John, please show your face. Mr. John, are you there? Mr. John. Oh, okay. Malibu, could you please show your face? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, we, we, I mean, if this guy trained you, then you know that face really well. <laughs> Then we've got our Lucy Munyanya. Please show your face. Yay. So could we please just give these guys a round of applause for coming through and sitting here with me and my nonsense and helping the rest of us just um, have a moment to, you know, talk about so much. So um, webinars, guys. This is, this is the new normal, right? And I'm sure you've attended a couple of them. So I'm going to try not to make this one really boring, considering that today is a Friday and there's so much we can do, considering that curfew is at 10 o'clock. So indulge me, right? So I am going to start by introducing, you know how because I'm a lady, I'm a feminist, just automatically. So I'm going to start by introducing our very own princess, Lucy Monyanye. And um, what do you need to know about Lucy that you don't already know? She is the owner of that kadudu. Remember the kadudu I told you guys about? Yep, it's Lucy. Um, in case you guys want to gift her anytime soon, she wears a size five shoe. <laughs> I know it's amazing, like how tall she is versus her shoe size, I don't understand. Um, Lucy may look like a typical 20 something year old, but really at heart, she's like double that. I'm not even gonna say what age that is, right? Uh, I've ridden severally with her and she's an awesome person to ride with. And the one thing I would say that she encourages like through and through is always ride your own ride. And um, I know she, she shows up for like so many rides. Like you wonder when Lucy works, right? But her most memorable, memorable ride is the ride that she did to Turkana, right? And maybe she can tell us a little bit about that. Now, having owned Kadudu and Princess, she's going to be taking us through how we break our bike. What does that even mean, guys? Okay, some of you old bikers will understand that lingo. But for the newbies, when you buy a new bike, you don't go to 100 immediately. So Lucy's um, conversation today is around that. And she's going to tell us about her story with Kadudu, her story with Princess. And yeah, and I hope we're all going to learn from her. So I'm just going to let her come in here and smile. She has the fullest smile, by the way. Like you guys can see her back teeth. And anyone who can tell me how many teeth Monyanya has, or if she has a cavity or anything, please, I will owe you 200 bob immediately. And we will post in this group right here. So Lucy Monyanya, welcome. Everybody give her a clap. Yeah, I know you guys can't clap. So please use those, those functions over there for reactions so that I know that you are following. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you very much. Um, no one else but Sam. Come on, where are the clubs, guys? Oh, thank you, Mercy. Thank you, Melly. Thank you. Um, that's it, guys. Come on, use your functions. Right, let's make Lucy feel welcomed. Yeah, well done, you guys. <laughs> so Lucy, hi, Karibu Sana. Um, thank you, Tata. Um, hi guys, uh, my name is Lucy Monyanye. I like to go by the name Monyanye in the biking community. Um, I used to own a bike called Kadudu. Right now she's um, owned by someone else. Um, my current bike is called Princess. I don't know whether that's so, uh, the basis with which uh, uh, Tata used to refer to me as a princess. But yeah, so um, I've, both of them, I bought them brand new and probably the next bike is going to also be um, a, a brand new purchase. I sort of um, have three options right now that I'm looking into. Um,
So, um, yeah. Munyanya having owned two bikes already, we are going to just, Munyanya, can you tell us first of all, what informed your decision? And even before we get there, can you please um, tell us how long you've been riding and why you even started riding? Um, did, were you convinced by a man or a woman? <laughs> well, who convinced me shouldn't be um, a key thing, though I trained in 2016 and actively started riding in 2019 or 18, I think. Um, what influenced my, my purchase, my choosing to purchase a new bike um, both times has been, I sort of um, um, struggle with understanding certain mechanics of a bike. So I wouldn't want to buy an old bike and then have to struggle with uh, historical mechanical issues, especially if you buy a bike from someone who's not very forthcoming in terms of uh, the mechanical issues a, a bike has. So that has always been um, has always been uh, the one thing I factored when I'm buying a bike. Um, and I think it still continues to be. Now, the only other thing will be, I think I also wanted to own something new. Um, and, and the first purchase was uh, um, an erratic one because I walked into so Hanson's, I saw a, a blue bike and then I just left there uh, having paid for it. I, I, I really liked, I don't know, there's something about that um, blue SF that makes it just um, so nice to look at, when it, especially when it's brand new, you know, scratches and everything. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, it was um, more of um, trying to avoid mechanical issues and also because I really liked it. Wow, Monyanye. So you know, those people, it has to be new, otherwise, otherwise. <laughs> so otherwise. Um, tell us, so you were attracted to a color for your first bike. Now your second bike, is it blue by any chance? Uh, no, my second bike is black. Um, for this one, it was more of, I was looking for certain features. So I was looking for an upright riding posture. I was looking for good ground clearance. And then I was looking for a little more speed um, um, so that I'm able to cover a longer distance in a shorter time, which meant I could adventure on it and go pretty um, um, far within the day and actually get to rest. And then also um, it, doesn't it doesn't struggle to go far because at times you notice when you're riding a small bike, you will get whatever you're going very tired. So I wanted a bike that's, that would sort of get me to wherever I'm going pretty fast, but also um, relatively okay by the time I got there. Those are some really good reasons. Thank you, Monyanya, for that. Um, I'm just wondering from the people who um, are listening to us, do you guys have any questions? Is there anybody who's recently buy or bought a bike or is looking into buying a bike and you may have a question to old riders like uh, Monyanya? Um, about, you know, buying a bike new. And if you also have any comments about buying a bike secondhand, we would appreciate. Just put them in the chat over there and I'll be here to read yes. and just um, to help. Um, kindly mute yourselves so that the room is nice and quiet. I may not be able to keep muting you. So please mute yourselves. Thank you. Um, so Monyanya, you've said you outgrew your other bike. Is that the word? And I'm just wondering, how long did it take you to get to that decision? Like, were you scared? Were you, did you, did you go on a group ride and decided your bike was slow? Did you just have money and you decided, hey, I could do this? Please tell us. Uh, clarification number one, I don't think it was a money thing. My current bike is cheaper than my first bike. So <laughs> it, was, it was not a money issue. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, it was about when I clocked about 8,000 8, kilometers or thereabout, I just figured I have been doing a lot within the city and in short distances. And then I think we did Arusha and came back. And then I used to feel very tired. Um, I, I, I just don't know. It, it's, you know how you keep riding and keep riding and then you get to a point where you realize, okay, um, I need different features to be able to keep riding if I, I want to keep enjoying this or else I'll just get tired of this thing and, and, and decide to call it quits all, all together. So I think I had gotten to that point where I needed certain features and my bike didn't have them. Like my sitting angle, I really needed an upright sitting post. I needed a wider, a wider seat. I needed um, higher ground clearance because at times um, when you, you, you do probably 300 kilometers and then you get to a place that has a patch that you need um, a, a bike that's a bit elevated. Oh, and then there was a and um, a farm we visited somewhere in, in Limur, Kibi, something. Um, my, my former bike used to have fairings all the way to the ground. So we were going, um, 
we were riding uh, um, across the farm like on grass and then the fairings just kept like uh, mowing the grass as we were moving at some point it just could not move anymore so we had to pack it there and leave it and then I was I pillioned on um, I think some guy um, some guys I think GS and then I was like oh my god I want a bike that has this kind of clearance that I'll keep going and going and going yeah <laughs> Now that you have mentioned GSs, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize my Sponios. So guys, I have Sponios because I am from the bestest Nubakumi ever. I know this is a webinar, but yeah, I must say my Sponios, Langata Weaves and Fuel. And I've got a couple of Sponios in there who, 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 oh, sorry. I've just been told my camera is off. Sorry, you guys. Here is my t-shirt for Langata Weaves and Fuel. These are my sponsors for tonight. Um, they are really backing me up today. And I will just thank the guys, the GS guys, because she mentioned it. Otherwise, moving on swiftly, because orange is the new black. Um, we can fight those walls in the chat if you all are interested. But for now, um, Monia, you said a very interesting word. Um, Ati, Ati, what got stuck somewhere so that you had to stop your bike? Please just remind me that word. Uh, fairings. Ah, I see. Yeah. So I, I see. see. So, so fairings. fairings. Now, this brings me to my next human, Mr. George Ambe. Before I ask Monia another question, what are fairings? So George Ambe, before he even starts talking, he has been riding since 2004. That, in my world, guys, is ancient, right? I'm sorry, because, like, I'm only um, 16. But I ride legally, thanks to Malibu. Malibu, wherever you are, you know, you know you, you're the one who helped me get here. Now, this guy, he loves Kuku and Ugani. And for that reason, he can really fix your bike. Like, he's that guy. He's a mechanic. And he's got tools and he's here to help us figure that out. So, um, George, I come back to you. What are fairings for those of us who are very new to this biking things? What, what is that? What is fairings, Mr. George? Yeah, thank you very much for having me today. I really like the energy of our um, um. Yeah, really, 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 really well. Uh, going back to your question, and before that, let me thank uh, you, Monyenya, and the other panelists for hosting this great show tonight. I'm sure we're going to learn a lot and, you know, uh, learn from each other and pass this knowledge to everyone who is out there who would need it. I'm sure they will all need this experience. Hmm. Uh, the question about the fairings, uh, we've got bikes that are naked. Uh, the naked bikes don't have this plastic that you see around them. And then uh, like the Kadudu bike for Munyenye, we can use that for example. Uh, it, had, it had a lot of plastics and the fairing is actually mostly the body of the bike that helps the bike to uh, cut wind. So if you have a bike that has fairings like covered, it is able to cut the wind nicely and increase the speed. Uh, any naked bike tends to drag. You know, we have these things that we call aerodynamic drag. So our fairing bike or fed bike has an aerodynamic, you know, it cuts through the wind, so it doesn't have that drag. And therefore, um, can you do have these uh, low, you know, hanging fairings that is usually used on trucks, mostly to trap oil. The reason why uh, those fairings were introduced to uh, uh, super bikes is usually to trap oil in case a bike overheats and it drips oil from the chain it doesn't spill that oil on the truck hence uh, you know giving uh, the other riders some kind of uh, safety measures because if you have oil on the truck that means someone might slip or you know you lose control and things like that right thank you very much george thank you very much well, um, now that we know that, so naked bikes, I don't know who you guys are and not naked bikes. I also don't know who you guys are, but here we are here to learn and just have a discussion about what people are going through, um, which now brings me to my next panelist.
guys, guys, let's put our hands together for Mali Boom. Now, you know, you guys, if you have been trained by this man, then you you know quite a number of things about him. But I know more. Guys, I know more. And why do I know more? Because um, I'm that babe who went ahead and found out something about him. So let me tell you. His first bike was a Jawa 250. Maybe I'll explain. Was a single cylinder um at a CSI semi indian clone it was an indian clone bike you indian riders guys by the way it's not pun it's not hatred i'm just trying to identify with uh, normal bikes because orange is the new black um and it was the only kickstart bike in 1993 okay it almost killed him several first of all 1993 guys i don't even think i was born but hey <laughs> Anyway, it almost killed him several times. Brakes would decide when to fail, when you approach an intersection, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, he'll tell us all about that and why his brakes would fail because he's the master of telling us about, you know what he tells us about? What does he tell us about? Anybody? For 200 bob, which I'm giving from my pocket, imagine, guys. No, actually, because I have the best ponyos. Bakumi. Uh, we we have gifts to give people who logged into this webinar. So what does Malibu usually tell us about our bikes before we even start? If you were trained by Malibu, I'm really advertising him right now. He's going to have to pay us after this. Um, so it is the, it is the what? Anybody on the chat, please, somebody, anybody, anybody? Guys, this is an interactive session. Tafadali, anybody? What is that thing that you do before you even start your bike? You know that you check up, you go around your bike to check if she's still there, if anybody, <laughs> you pray. <laughs> Ezra, thank you so much. Yes, you pray. Amanda, oh my goodness. Malibu, you owe this student of yours. Yep, you guys have got it. T-C-L-O-C-S. I'm making you guys think about what I'm saying. T-C-L-O-C-S. So now Malibu. Now that George has told us that this, uh, things, this things that um, Monyanya talked about were supposed to help with oil and stuff like that, can you please come in and just tell us about TCLOCS? Karibu sign, Malibu. So we'll go back to Mr. George. Um, George, as we wait for John to come back and just take us through uh, TCLOCS, just because I'm trying to make it difficult for my students to follow. Um, maybe, George, you can tell us what it is you do in Narok. And um, also just show us your background, perhaps, to show us how informed you are. <laughs> how long have you been taking care of these machines? Karibu sana, George. And just give us that information. Yeah, well, I'm in Narok. Uh, this is where my family is. Uh, of course, I live in Nairobi. At the same time, I live in Narok. Just that, so that you know, if my wife doesn't pick my call, just drive my bike to Narok, it's like one hour and 30 minutes. Just ask her, hey, why are you not picking my call? Then I ride back to Nairobi. Away from that, yes, this is where my family is. Um, I've been working in Nairobi. Uh, it wasn't easy to bring your family in Nairobi and stay with them. because I used to you know, travel a lot, so I decided to stay in Narok. And it's also a good reason, yeah. I own a Transalp, most of them have seen it. Uh, you asked on how I take care of it. Well, she has clocked, uh, I don't know what, she has clocked like uh, 75,000 kilometers. I've had this bike for almost four years now. It's pretty nice old uh, bike. And I'm happy about it because it has taken me places one of our memorable trips, uh, Monyanya and I, was uh, to Kana. We rode to Trukana and back, and that was one of the best trip. I would recommend anybody who loves adventure to uh, try. Thank you so much, George. Um, great, Sir John is back. Sir John, now you missed the queue to enter, so now I have to look for another queue for you to enter. Um, but yes, um, Monyanya is here basically to just tell us how to break into a bike. And now that uh, another trip has been mentioned to Turkana, at this point when you were going to Turkana, had you bricked your bike? Had you broken your bike? Uh, 
<laughs> this English, it is difficult. Had you broken your bike for this trip and how long did it take for you to make a decision like that? And even before that, now that you bought two new bikes, um, how long, how, how much commitment, like oh, not even commitment, like how many days, if you can remember, did it take for you to actually break your bike? How enthusiastic did you have to be about riding to get there? And just take us through it, you know, like those of us who have not bought new bikes, take us through it nicely. Thanks. Um, thanks, Tata. So uh, breaking in a new bike, um, usually it's a restriction within, within which period you're not supposed to pass a certain number of RPMs. And uh, there's um, a checklist. It's usually on the manual of the bike. So that checklist provides that for the first probably um, 800 kilometers or 1,000 kilometers of that bike, you're required not maybe to, super, to, uh, to surpass um, 6,000 RPMs. And then uh, between the 1,000 or 800 kilometers to 3,000, you're not supposed to peter um, either um, 7,000 uh, RPMs or 9,000 RPMs. And then after that, now you can um, use all those rotations per minute um, 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 as far as your dashboard allows. Now, the thing about that is, um, we remember when you buy a new bike, parts, all the parts are new and they were just assembled. So the, why the restriction is there is for that for you to allow the bike to slowly learn to mesh into each other and mold into each other as, as the bike rotates, as the parts rotate, for you to create the movement. If you, if you are too harsh with your bike when you're breaking in, it's bound to wear out faster because parts were not um, slowly hitting each other when, however they were supposed to hit each other or um, 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 you are very rough with it. So certain things didn't um, take the molding they were supposed to take. And as a result, um, you'll probably have mechanical uh, issues faster. But then the thing about how long it takes to um, break in a bike depends. My first bike took me about a four months because I remember the reason why it took me four months is I was not that aggressive. And then uh, my, my commute then used to be, I think, um, three to five, six kilometers per day, um, which means for me to, eat, to, for me to hit the first 800 kilometer mark must have taken a long time. And then I didn't also like riding over the weekend because I'd get home tired. I didn't even want to ride the following day, but then I remember, okay, I need to keep doing this or else I'll, I'll start, I'll stop altogether. But then breaking in Princess, Princess the current bike, um, I just had one long ride uh, from Nairobi down to Kisumu. By the time I got to Kitale, I had clocked in a thousand kilometers. So we did the, uh, the change, the oil change um, while in Kitale and the filters. And then I rode back to Nairobi. I rode um, a few more kilometers, uh, clocked 3000. And then we did the, the second comprehensive um, the second comprehensive service for, um, for that. And then after that, I was allowed to go for as, as, as many RPMs as I could or as I wanted to. Wow, thank you very much for that, Munyanye. So, Sir John, I hear you're back. Say hello to us, please. Sir John. Yeah, yeah, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Sir John, fantastic. Can you hear me? So, Mr. Sir John, now, Munyanye here is talking about stuff that you did not really sit me down to discuss. You know, about this breaking bike. Then I'm also seeing there's a... Sir John, now that you're back. Can you please tell us, if I have a brand new bike, what are the, some of the things I'm supposed to look out for before I even get on the bike? So, Karibu sana. I, pan. The, uh, I, I hope so. So, um, what do you check on your bike? Um, there's a pre-ride check, there's a pre-start check. Pre-ride check is uh, anything from, is has an acronym called the uh, T-Clock. T C L O C S name suggest if you follow the acronym, which it's basically a way of getting to know your bike. Um, so T tires, what do you check in tires? You learn what to check on tires, tire treads, the rim. Uh, you know, have to know your tire. Are you on a street tire? Is an off road tire? Get to uh, know the um, what kind of tire you have. Is it tube or tubeless? Actually, that is pretty mm -hmm. important. People don't really know what kind of tires they have. Um, once you check your tires, uh, you don't have to check a tire tread all the time. It's really, I mean, a tire tread will not fade in overnight. Uh, but you need to check your tire pressure. You need to check your um, your rim for 
any band or anything else. Then you quickly move on to uh, your controls. The controls are everything on your control, on your handlebar, more or less. Uh, your clutch, your, your um, check your clutch, depress your clutch, release it. Uh, surprisingly, your clutch cable gets frayed pretty easily. It can simply snap on your riding. So just check it. Just pull it in, release. Check the tension on your clutch. Um, you may need to adjust it. Uh, um, especially for multiple user bikes, uh, people have a tendency to adjust the clutch to their preference. You want it to release closer, you want to release faster or farther away, uh, it varies. So it's, a, it's a rider's preference. Then you move uh, control, check your throttle, um, snap it back. Uh, surprisingly, people forget that if you have, it's not, the throttle can actually get stuck. Especially if you have a uh, dead end uh, bow weight. Um, um, and as we try and get him back, let us just establish that breaking into a bike is actually not the easiest thing and there are many schools of thought around this which um i will ask george to also chip into this conversation knowing well how to deal with the mechanics of a bike about uh what it means to soft brake and what it means to hard brake monyanya you can also tell us was yours a soft brake or a hard brake Uh, allow me to learn first what the difference is before I can commit. <laughs> uh, so Nathan, we see you. Uh, thanks for sending us um, conversation. So George, can you please tell us what it means to have a hard break and a, uh, a soft break? Karibu, George. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, hard break, soft break, actually like self-explanatory. Uh, when you're doing a soft, uh, soft uh, break. Sorry, George, I need to interrupt you again because I need you to use like your big man voice so that we can hear you way clearly. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I was saying hard breaking and soft breaking. These are two different things. And uh, if I can use an example, uh, let's say from Nyenye, her first, uh, second, she, break it in softly because she rode alone at half pace. We could actually document or actually follow her up on all the stops that she made, places she went, and all this was uh, slow riding, riding at lower, uh, you know, uh, kilometers like 80 kilometers per hour or lower than that. And that is actually uh, soft breaking. You allow those uh, internal components to get used to each other slowly, slowly, without pushing them. Heartbreaking would then be you know, someone who takes his own bike, start riding, chasing everybody out there. And then in the end, somehow some of them get lucky, nothing happened to their bikes. In a long run, your bike develops some fatigue in the long, long run, but it's a good matter. So get some few uh, methods that are already uh, fatigued, then in the end, have a poor uh, performing bike. So that is more soft braking and hard braking. So basically, what you need to do is allow yourself a bit of time to get used to your bike. One, you need to know the limit of your bike slowly, slowly. Don't, don't just push it straight away, unless you don't want to have that bike for long. Or maybe you don't want the next person who's going to have it uh, to enjoy it the same way. So uh, it is recommended to get your bike slowly. And if you can read your owner's mind, it actually tells you every single detail that you need to, to do on your bike. And uh, number one, how uh, you need to shift your bike. Some people will shift their bike. I'm talking about the gears. So when you ride at what speed, you then need to go to the second gear, third gear, and fourth gear. And Cruising gear if you have a mixed gear. So uh, a manual will actually explain to you 
each and every year ratio uh, the speed or to match the speed that you need to uh, you know change the next uh, year if you follow that and it's usually very important to follow the owners in mind get any other things that you're told by a friend a mechanic because every bike has its own manual and its own way of dealing with it more or less they will be similar but it's always recommended if you can use the owner's at top tip use owner's manual to actually identify some of these things one of the most important thing is actually you need to know what specific parts or specifics in your bike that is uh, recommended by the owner's manual the very first breaking in after that you can figure out what parts are actually also to your bike or any other bike or what uh, part that you may use you know, but that is after a while um thank you very much um george for that information um that is so interesting fortunately i guess or unfortunately i from my personal experience I think my bike was broken into for me. <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> but for all you princes and princesses out there who have bought new bikes and you're still, please make sure, like you have been told, make sure you read your owner's manual. It's really important. Um, and I am sure Munyanya now has learned that she soft broke her bike, broke her bike softly. You know, guys, English came on a boat, so I cannot attest to it too much um thank you so much for that now malibu you're back would you be able to just finish for us the tc locks which is really important guys and like i said your training really matters in the sense that if you were taught by him then you know that how the importance of this check before you even start your bike and if you weren't well that's why you're here you're going to learn a couple of things from this session. So Malibu, I'm going to give it back to you to just finish that. And then we'll go back to George and we will have a discussion behind a very funny story that I'm going to tell you. So Malibu, come back, please, and finish us off on the TCLOCS. Okay. Um, so, uh, TikToks, as I was saying, I'll just run through it pretty fast. I hope everyone can hear me now. So uh, tires, controls, lights, oils, chassis, and stands. Um, check your tires. Check everything associated with your tires. Um, as I was saying, you need to know your tires. Do you have are your tires tube or tubeless? Uh, it will depend. That will be will determine what will happen when you get a uh, when you get a puncher. It's so it's important to know your tires. Most people don't even bother to know the tires. Um, um, no, are your tires suited for the kind of riding you do? I find uh, people change tires. I think Monyanya would be a witness to this. She changed her tires because uh, I think the bike was was fitted with street tires, and most of and she wanted a bit more traction, so she changed to um, some um, dual sport tires. So know your tires, know what you're riding. What, um, and not all tires will fit in all bikes. Uh, people always want bigger tires. Uh, well, we always want bigger wallets, but anyway, it's not, uh, yeah. So tires, then move on to controls. Check your controls. I was talking about the clutch. You can adjust your clutch to your preference. Um, but it's something that you need to know. Uh, check your tires, check your clutch, check the tension of your clutch. Uh, check your um, everything on the handlebars. Check your check your throttle. Pull, uh, snap it back. Um, your throttle can get stuck, especially if you have bar and weight. Uh, if the bike drops, it can press against the throttle. Can get stuck. Uh, so check, check, check. All this is a process of I say checking. Um, check your gear lever. Check your brake lever. Check your front brake, rear brake levers. Just check. Make sure that everything is working. Check, check, check. Uh, once you move from your controls, uh, lights, check your lights, check your lights, check your lights. Yeah, people put on the lights when at night, then, then you realize, uh, yeah, my bulb, uh, like, uh, I don't, you don't even know because you never checked it. 
um, even just check if the if if it illuminates, not illuminates really. Illuminate would mean that you're being seen. Does it project as much as you expect it to? Is it too high? Because you can adjust your headlights also. So people just buy bike stock from the uh, dealer, ride them. The, the headlight is pointing or in the heavens, and you're wondering why you can't see the road. It's because you don't even know how to adjust your own light uh, so that you can ref- you can actually see where you're going. There's something called overriding your headlight distance, which basically means that your headlight could be pointing at a spot at a, at a, at a, at a point of the road, which is which is which is actually uh, what's closer than where you'd actually ideally stop at the speed that you're going at. So you you find that you can't see your braking. Uh, your headlight is is shorter than your braking distance. Uh, your headlight is shorter than your braking distance. That's really important. I've I've seen that a lot. Then you find guys riding in high beams because their low beams are too short, um, or rather, the yeah, their low beams are too short, and their high beams are too high. So you check your lights. Check your lights. Uh, it's a, sometimes it, it it requires you to ride at night so you can know how your lights. Uh, how your lights are, um, the distance of how your lights illuminate, but also uh, how how far your light projects, but also learn to know, you need to know how bright your light is. That's why people change their bulbs to LEDs, HIDs, and all that. You need to know your lights. Um, Check your brake lights. Uh, Man, people don't even bother checking their brake lights. You know, you you don't even know if you're, not even brake lights, parking lights, your bulb, the only thing that works in your bulb, in your, in your rear bulb is your brake light, but your parking light doesn't work. So at night, unless you're braking, no one can see you because your parking light uh, simply just, uh, and it, unless it's an LED light, if it's this normal bulb, that bulb is 20 bob. Actually, it's, I think it's 50 bob. It's just cheap, you know? So change it, change it. There's no, you have no excuses to, not to change your bulb. It's not rocket science. It's just, uh, it's a simple thing. Um, of course, your indicators, uh, you check your indicators. Um, then that's part of your lights. Part of your lights is actually your display. Check if your display is on. Check if they, they're called idiot lights, all those neutral lights, um, indicator, high beam. If you have uh, all those, <coughs> check if you're working. Um, if you, uh, check even, uh, then you move on from your lights. You go to your oils and other fluids. If you have an, an a, 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 um, a water or other, yeah, an, a, a liquid cooled bike, check your coolant. Check, check your coolant, check your coolant. Um, if your bike, uh, so if your bike is oil cooled, uh, it pretty much or air cooled, you're you're fine. Just check your uh, check your oil levels. There's nothing like topping up oil. Just change the oil. This thing of mixing old and new oil, I don't know where guys got that from. They're called, uh, yeah, those are myths. There's a lot of myths going around. Uh, In fact, if you hang out with Boda guys, the kind of myths you hear, they they defy logic. But don't believe, just change the oil. If it's low, don't top up. Change it, change it. Put new oil all the time. Uh, Check your coolant level, check your oils, check your brake fluid levels. If your brake has, has brake fluid reservoirs, check, check, check. Um, part of checking your oils is also check where the bike is parked. If you see anything, any any fluid on the on where the bike is parked, means that something is leaking. Check what is it? What is leaking? Is it brake fluid? Is it petrol? Is it coolant? Is it oil? You need to know what is leaking if there is a leak, and where. And then from then on, you can you can troubleshoot to where the leak is coming from. Um, but you need to know what fluid is leaking. That's pretty important. Uh, once you move on from your fluids, uh, your oils, you go to your tires, controls, light oils, chassis. Go to your chassis. Uh, part of your chassis is to check the suspension, check that you have no leaks in your suspension. Check your suspension is uh, adjustment. If you have rear, the adjustment of your suspension, especially the rear, because usually for most bikes, it's the rear suspension that's adjustable. Check that the adjustment is correct for you. Um, it's not too hard, it's not too soft. Um, check your chain, uh, part of your, of your 
chassis and your part of the suspension is your drivetrain. Check your chain, check, make sure that the chain is within, is not too tight, not too, not loose at all, and not too tight. Uh, make sure that it's also lubricated. Uh, you don't have a chain, you have a belt, do the same. If you don't have a belt, you have a drive shaft. Um, you need to know when the last time you changed your transmission fluid. Um, change it if it's due for changing. Uh, but those guys are the lucky ones. They change in the tens of thousands. Uh, so then you move on to your stands. Stands are simple. Uh, you, have, you have a double stand or you have a, you either have a, a double stand or you have a side stand or you have both. So check both. Um, uh, you need to know how to pull up your bike on the double stand. Uh, I find most most people I would have, a, have have find that difficult. Um, but I'm sure there are a couple of YouTube videos out there which will help you with that. So that's basically T clock tires, controls, lights, oils, chassis, and stands. You do this all the time. It becomes second nature. Then things become easier. Uh, it's something we all, we all teach. It's uh, because it's part of knowing your bike. Know your bike and, well, you'll be a safer rider out there. It's part of risk, uh, being aware of your risk and trying to manage your risks. And one of the risks is knowing your bike. And uh, what do you call it? Service and maintenance issues. Those are part of knowing your bike. Yep, so that's all. Thank you so much, Sir John. Now, guys, we have gone through T clocks, and I'm sure a lot of you I can already see in the chat have an idea of what to do. You've already been through a couple of things. Nathan, thank you for sharing your experience and for even suggesting that sometimes Google actually really helps. If you go into YouTube, there's a lot of information that you can get. Um, so Asante Sana. Um, and now, with that said, we're going to bring back Mr. George to just tell us um, a couple of tips about the kind of tools we should have on our day-to-day -day ride. Now, Team Orange is the new black. I may just confess. Um, I haven't been riding for too long, but I didn't know that I have tools on the bike, you know. And, and I found myself in a situation where I needed a tool, you know. But I didn't know that when you open the chair, the one for the pillion, that there's a thing there and then there's an entire toolbox. But then when I found out, I still didn't know what to do with the tools. So I'm going to bring Mr. George in here to just tell us the basic tools, the things that you must have when you are traveling. You know, whether short distance or long distance, just those couple of things that you really, really must have to be able to just get on with it, right? Don't be a dunder like me. I learned a lot, by the way, now I know my tools and I can use them. So Mr. George, Karibu Sana, and tell us which tools we must have on us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, Mr. John has really, um, Malibu has really told us a lot. And actually, I can actually pick from um, where he stopped or emphasizing more on the tick locks. And if you are aware of the tick locks, then you might need something which is tightened, like a side mirror or a stool. So tick locks and tools basically go hand in hand. Yeah. Again, um, I would also like to uh, emphasize more on the oil change. Yeah, if you notice your bike, uh, you keep on adding oil, like he said, please change that oil. And then that also gives you an indication that something is wrong in your bike. So if you can, if you're adding your oil in the middle of the service, let's say, for example, your bike takes like 2,000 kilometers at the next uh, oil change or service, and then after 1,000 kilometers, you're losing oil. Uh, well, you need just to top up the reason maybe you want to get used somewhere, but think about it. You need to think about why the oil is disappearing. Okay, the other thing is, now let's go back to the tools that you need. Thank you very much for uh, noting that you had tools under the seat of your bike and you're not able to use them, or you don't even know how they work. It is okay. Most of us have gone through that. And it is always very important. You know, if you don't know how to use them, as long as you have them, it is very, very good. Have the tools to be with you. Simple tools because you cannot carry the whole garage with you. So uh, luckily, uh, some bikes come with uh, toolkits. 
Some of them are tucked under the seat. Some of them are just on the side of the bike that give me access. Uh, some of these tools are usually not enough um, for you to drive long distances, or maybe if you go places that um, actually can't have uh, such tools. So let's begin by knowing what are these tools. Uh, there's a wide range of tools, and just to help you, uh, because we cannot break them down, all of them, the best way that I have learned to use my tools is actually uh, use tools that are specifically for your bike. Remember, we have a range of bikes, old bikes, modern bikes, or newer bikes, but they all have different sets of tools. If you are talking about an old bike, uh, let's say for example, my bike is 23 years old, she's turning 24 in August. Uh, I'm mainly uh, having some screws, and therefore I will need this. I don't know whether you can see it. This is a screwdriver. It's very small. It is specifically for my bike uh, tool kit. Ideally, you'd have something like this. This is a screwdriver. So my bike can't hold this one for the toolkit, it's a bit smaller. And since we always encourage to pack light or carry light. So my bike comes with um, a few simple tools. So a screwdriver, which is a star. We call it star. It has, for those who are familiar with screwdriver, it has, we have a star screwdriver and a flat screwdriver. So the flat screwdriver would look flat, of course, at the head, has a flat head, I think you can see this, has a flat head, has a flat screwdriver, and then this one is a star screwdriver, it has sort of star, or Phillips. Another very important thing, uh, going back to your toolkit, I'm very sure some of the bikes do not have all the tools they need, especially when you need to move the tire, the front tire or the rear tire. So uh, you need to custom make or to find uh, a solution for your problem. And this is what I encourage people to do. Walk around with the mechanic, ask him to help you identify some of these screws and the tools that you need to open them or to tighten them when you need to. A very good uh, experience or typical experience of one of our riders recently, actually, uh, this person had a flat tire. The tire was somehow ripped on the wall, and this person was not able to remove that tire. I mean, the person was somewhere in the middle. There were border border guys who could actually help, but the bike that person was riding was sort of a uh, different bike from the locals. So they were not able to find that a specific tool to open the front tire, get it out, and then replace the tube because that person was riding a tubeless tire. So what I encourage you is that when you plan to ride a trip out of the city or wherever you want to go, please make sure you have the right tool to open the flat tire, I mean to fix your flat tire, that is opening the front tire, tightening the rear tire, and making sure that in case of loosening or tightening the chain. So have that specific tool for your bike. Walk around with your mechanical friend and identify every single screw. Make it simple because you know you have a lot of tools in your bike. Make it simple and accessible. Yep. So one of the things that you need to uh, pay attention is your chain. Do I have a spanner or a tool that I can adjust the chain? If I don't know how to adjust the chain, no worry. Somebody else somewhere might be able to, as long as I have the right tools for my bike. Uh, do I have the right tool for my rear tire? Yes. For example, my bike comes with um, comes with this. This is a, a 24 millimeter range. Range is a, the, you know, millimeter is the, the, the size of the spanner that is used to tighten and loosen the rear uh, axle. The rear axle is the rear tire. So it has that space, it's very small. If you look at it, it's very, very small. It's originally from the bike, it's very small. In comparison to this, this is a 
very big spanner carrying around a lot of Facebook. So uh, some bike comes very small, depending on what bike you like to buy, comes very small. Another very important tool to carry with you is this one. This one is sort of a multi purpose uh, spanner. It's called an adjustable spanner. Don't worry about these names because after this, we will put down all the names and write tools that you need. But for the purpose of uh, trying to understand what we're talking about in terms of tools, this one is called uh, an adjustable spanner that can go, you know, you can make it smaller depending on the size of the nut you tend to work on, you can make it bigger. So I use this like tightening my right and my rear tire and my front tire without having any issue at all. That is uh, as far as tools are concerned. The other thing, you need to have a tool, uh, I mean a puncture repair tool. Now, we are talking uh, to people who want to drive the Kana, of course. Use Kikana most because it's a recent trip. If you're gonna go to a place like Kikana, uh, before you start that trip, there are things that you really need to have. Because we found out that in Kikana, the locals around there are only basically using uh, Hondas, the small Hondas, the Judge, uh, let's say the Bosworth. So our bikes do not actually share some of these tools with them. Uh, this is mainly like the you know, tire removing tool. Not actually tire removing tool, but the axle uh, loosening and tightening. So one of our rider actually had a flat tire, and that tire had was also a tube. So we were not able to fix it, but because we had tubes with us, we had to fix the tube. But before then, we had a problem of opening that front tire because we did not have a specific tool for that. Uh, neither was there to bike school box. That's why I still emphasize more on walking around your bike and finding the right tool for your bike specifically. Yep. So for those people who have um, modern bikes, it is very important to know uh, that you use, you don't use screwdrivers, but you use Torx or Allen. Allen would look like this. This is an Allen key. Don't worry about it. We will try to put them on the list uh, of what you need. So you need to have an allen that helps you to tighten your side mirror, maybe your, of course we have these uh, plastics that are called bearings, you may need to tighten that. For people who ride GSS, KTM, you're not left behind. You guys will use um, Tox, there's that special uh, screw driver, actually it's called a Toxic, Tox, T-O-R-X. You, we will also put that on our list. It is very essential to have it because you can use it all around your bike, even moving the rear tire. That is very, very important. Uh, things like the flat spanner is usually in the uh, tool kit. So you will have flat spanner, you will have a uh, screwdriver based on your bike, you will also have small pliers that are not really very practical but it helps one or the other but don't worry we will still put them wow you know george because i know you and i know you have like 140 tools in your toolbox yeah <laughs> we just need the super essential and i think one of the things that we're learning from george and his idea of what kind of tools you need is to actually think through what kind of trip you're doing right if you're doing a long distance trip there's so many things to consider like what he said you go to turkana what they use is probably very different from what your bike has and uses so a, a very important thing to look at that where are you going you know um if you're around my Bakumi over here yeah and you have like um orange is the new black if you stop somewhere there we'll be there to help you because we're those people right if so basically what i'm saying without having so much pun is you've got to think through about where you're going and what your desired trip if you're planning to go off-road then be prepared for it like what george is saying you know don't just go there 
you know, be prepared for it. And George, sorry for cutting you short, but it's because I know you have 140 tools, right? Um, at the end of this, we are going to be able to just list down all the things that George has told us so far, all those tools you're going to find, and also this recording for anybody who has missed it or you'd like to listen to a few parts, that is also going to be shared with all of you. So I'm going to give George one more minute to just summarize in the most important things that you need to carry. And then I will give you a little bit of information about what's going to happen next week and just... Um, have a few recognitions and then we're going to end the session. So guys, please give me just five more minutes. Thank you so much for your patience so far, but yeah, just five more minutes. So George, two minutes for you, the, the other three are mine. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm gonna be very, very brief. Uh, like he's just saying, uh, you need to know where you're going and what you need, that is very, very important. So uh, in summary, please, the best way to help everyone here is out of what you have on the toolkit, please walk around with the mechanic or a friend and identify every single tool and make a small list out of it or a small, yeah, a small list of the tools that you need out of it that you can work on. Somebody else can also help you work on. One of those very important things are the chain, for the front tire and the rear tire, just in case you want to pull it up. Uh, you also need, of course, puncture repair kit. It comes with a package. You need a small compressor. If you're going to Canada, that is a small compressor or a hand pump. Most bikes will have a place to fit it. And yeah, just make a small toolkit that is very light, very simple, that can also be used on the bike in this case. That is the best way I can actually summarize it uh, by saying that make a tool that is special for you. And one more thing, very important, top tip, be gentle on your tools. Yeah, if you get those tools, be gentle on them. Sometimes you might work wrongly, you might spoil a screw. You have the right tool, yes, but you don't know how to do it. So really learn how to, to make use of those tools, handle those tools with care. Yes. Thank you so much, George. I am just looking at the chat, guys, and it's absolutely, absolutely lit. Thank you very much, Malibu, for responding to the questions that are in there. Uh, Nathan and Nicholas, I see you guys have um, quite a number of things to say, and thank you so much for responding um, to night driving and driving in the rain and actually riding, sorry, let me use the correct word, riding in the rain, riding off-road. All these things, guys, are things that we go through every day. And let me tell you, if there's anything I have learned, um, is it's important to talk, right? It's important to share your experiences. It's important to listen to what other people are going through. Yes, ride your own ride every day, do your own speed and everything, but it really does help when we are discussing these things. So I really, really appreciate all of you coming. Today's hashtag was all about our bike awareness, which is great. And I'm glad that all of you showed up. We've done, um, T-C-L-O-C-S with uh, Sir John Malibu. We've done learning how to break our bike. And even in this session, we've learned that there's soft braking and hard braking. And then we've also learned that it's very important to have a good set of tools for your bike, right? And most importantly, your user's manual. And in case you've bought um, not a brand new bike and you still like you 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 need to be interested in your own bike find these things they're all on google they're all on youtube people are doing all sorts of reviews so please guys get in there find people find your team find people who ride your bike and and talk about your experiences i know we've got so many other groups of smaller smaller groups about like if you're a benelli i can see people here benelli i can see gs people i can see team orange is the new black yeah, so Ezra, that's what it's about. It's just about which group are you interacting with and which group are you talking to about what you're going through with your bikes. So guys, let's keep conversation. This whole month is just about creating awareness. Now we've been through a lot of things as bikers. We've, we are discriminated against every day. We're treated really badly sometimes on the road. But us guys being aware of ourselves and helping others be aware of us is what is gonna get us where we need to go. So let's keep up with the morale for just helping each other, sorting each other out. Identify yourself with a Nyumbakumi. Make sure you're in the right place at the right time doing your part. You just do your part. The rest of the madness on the road, guys, we can't account for. But make sure you do your part. 
So this week was just about our bike awareness. Next week, we've got another moderator. She's na her name is Sheila, and she will be uh, talking about um, self-awareness. It will be hashtag Gicheki. So it will not just be now about your bike. So today we've talked about our bike. What do we know about our bike, right? Now, next week, it will be about self-awareness. So make sure you log in, same time. Uh, probably they'll do better with time. But guys, I really want to appreciate you guys for just being so patient with me and for taking my banter you guys are awesome so yeah thank you to all the organizers to my sponios i must mention you guys again langata weaves and fuel um even to thicker Bakumi, you guys thanks a lot akina nicholas you guys have come through quite a bit um and basically to every Nyumbakumi here and for everybody who has come through ink sisterhood wba um Throttle Queens, Pinky Dada, like everybody, basically every single biker, guys, it is so important that you're here and that you're helping. All right, for helmets is, 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 <laughs> yeah, I have so many people to thank, guys, and I'm just losing it. But it's only because I'm, I'm trying not to take more of your time. And again, thank you for your patience and thank you for tuning in. And thank you, everybody.